when Michael meets Dahlia, he thinks it's meant to be. We just seem like we connected perfect. There's just one problem. She wants him dead. Oh, are you sure you want to kill this dude? I'm positive, like 5,000% sure. Who would ever see that coming? I didn't even get kill him softly, make him go away painlessly. She is determined. But there's a twist in the plot. This is Sergeant Frank Ramsey. It's very urgent when you come home. It involves your husband. There's been an incident. He had it so bad that Love was blind, deaf, and dumb. My name is Steve Sharippa. I grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. I've seen good people turn bad and bad people turn worse. Some took contracts to carry out a hit. Some were victims of a hit. To hit men, life and death is just part of the business. It's nothing personal. It's a beautiful August morning in South Florida. And 26-year-old Dahlia DiPolito is starting it at the gym. That's when she gets the phone call every wife fears. This is Sergeant Frank Ramsey, Boynton Beach Police Department. We're at your residence, ma'am. It's very urgent when you come home. It involves your husband. There's been an incident. At the condo Dahlia shares with husband Michael, the grim task of securing a homicide scene is nearly complete. Boynton Beach cops are well trained in crime scene procedures. They'll need their skills today because this one is a fake. There's no body, just a trap for a homicidal newlywed wife. This is a story about a terrible thing that almost happened to a guy who should have seen it coming. It's about a temptress who sets up the man who loves her, kind of like that old Bible story, Samson and Delilah. Mike thinks he's in a different movie, one of those hooker with a heart of gold jobs. Pretty woman, maybe. But Delilah, I mean Dahlia, make no mistake. She's a vixen straight out of the Old Testament. October 2008, the year before that fateful August. Michael DiPolito isn't looking for trouble, but he does want to get naughty. Mike's wife, Marie, is out of town. He has needs and a telephone. Bad combo. He called an escort to his office in Boca, and the woman that showed up was Dahlia. Samson, meet Delilah. How did Mike feel that ill-starred day? I'd like to tell you I met Dahlia at church, but I'd be lying to you. Me and Dahlia, we got along really well right from the beginning. At the time, I thought my first marriage wasn't really working out. I wasn't happy. And, and I meet Dahlia, and everything's new and exciting. And, and the reality, you know, looking back on it, I made a very bad choice. You know, I had a really good first wife. When Maria got back from traveling, she told me that Michael did pretty quickly ask for a divorce. Maria and Michael DiPolito were divorced in January of 2009. And five days later, Dahlia and Michael DiPolito were married. When I first met Dahlia and we got married that fast, we just seemed like we connected perfect. When I was with Dahlia, I felt very alive. We'd have sex like five times a day, every day. It was exciting all the time. Dahlia must have some mind-blowing talents, but Michael believes it's way more than that. It's a beautiful connection that's meant to be. What he doesn't know is that Dahlia is no stranger to such fateful connections, and she's turned a profit on every one. She certainly seemed to be linked to gentlemen that had, that had money. She liked the lifestyle. She liked the fancy clothes. She liked the fancy jewelry. What she likes most is keeping everything when the romance is over. For a girl who likes costly trinkets, Dahlia came to the right place. Boynton Beach is right next door to Palm Beach. When old money flies south for the winter, it often lands right here. The price of admission to those gated mansions is usually a trust fund. What Dahlia's got is a hot body. That works too, 
if, like her, you're willing to rent it out to paying customers. She'd get her hair done every week, fake eyelashes, fake nails, the fake boobs. You know, there's a lot of maintenance involved. She spent time fixing herself up to look good. Florida is a really transient place, and a lot of people come to Florida to escape their lives, whether they are criminals or whether they're retirees. If you think about it, criminals and retirees are both after easy lifestyles. The difference is who earned the money. Dahlia came from New York. For Mike, Florida is a refuge from some mistakes he made back in Philly. I originally came to Florida to stay out of trouble. And lo and behold, uh, you know, I, I've done quite the opposite of that, I hate to say. Before we get too far, you want to know that hiring Dahlia for a quickie is not Mike's first ethical lapse. Before their fateful encounter, he'd made a career of scamming people out of their nest eggs. He'd lure them into surefire investments and keep the money. Uh, we had a business that didn't exist. Uh, we were raising funds, foreign currency options that we didn't trade. He took the money that they were supposedly investing and he spent it on whatever he wanted. So then he was busted and he did go to prison. He does plead guilty, accepts responsibility for the charges and he spends two years in prison. And then he's put on probation for, I think it's 28 years. So he's gonna be on probation until the year of 2032. Mike DiBolito's friends say he comes out of prison a changed man, determined to stay on the up and up. Well, score one for Florida's corrections department. Mike starts a new life, full of promise. His biggest commitment is to pay back the people he ripped off. We'll get to that later. Right now, let's stay on the romance. Mike and Dahlia seem made for each other. My main thing is tanning in the gym. There was a routine that Dahlia described for her and Michael's daily lives together. That routine consisted of waking up pretty early in the morning. She said she would give him steroid injections. Then they would both go to the gym. Michael DiPolito had liposuction, I believe on his love handles. I have a bad habit. I focus a lot on the external things. You know, wow, palm trees, it's exciting. Everybody has a nice car. And I, I'm a shopaholic, I love to shop. So. Mike and Dahlia share the same values. They're shallow, but they are values. For Dahlia, becoming Mrs. DiPolito is a dream come true. Before, she only got trinkets for her favors. You know, jewelry, a car. Now she has a whole condo. Trouble is, it isn't really hers. She can't sell it and move on. And anyway, she's just married to the owner. It won't be her property unless something drastic happens. But these days, Anything is possible. All of this was happening in less than three months. Every day, something was moving and moving, and it was exciting. Sure, I, I didn't have time to breathe. Everything was, was working out perfect. I bought the house. We got married. We got a new dog. I would say to Dahlia, I said, some people don't ever get to this spot. I said, we're young, and we're already there. As far as Mike can see, Dahlia's a little miracle who's upended his life in every possible way. All of them, good. She just seemed like she had her act together. She was telling me that she was, uh, you know, selling real estate. And I, you know, I believed it. Why would I not? She did get a real estate license, I believe. And she was working for a real estate company, perhaps briefly, but long enough to sell Michael DiPolito his condo. How she sells Mike the idea that she suddenly become a successful real estate agent is a head scratcher, but it's something he wants to believe. She was telling me she had a couple closings from houses coming and uh, they just never materialized. The commissions never materialized because Dahlia isn't selling real estate. She's still in the escort business. Dahlia and Mike are both giddy with the excitement of getting what they always wanted. Mike's got Dahlia, and Dahlia's finally got something to show for all of her hard work besides chump change and rug burns. Thing is, Mike hasn't figured out that he's the one thing in this pretty picture Dahlia could live without. Okay, 
So let me set the scene. Wednesday, August 5th, 2009, Boynton Beach, Florida. At about 6.30 in the morning, Mike DiPolito is rudely awakened. The cops tell him his wife planned to have him killed today. Oh, it's gonna get wild. Mike needs to come downtown pronto. So how did we get here? From guy meets girl to newlywed wife tries to have husband whacked. Oh, it's easy to say Mike should have seen it coming, but who would? To any normal person, it's just too damn weird. Even so, it's not like there haven't been red flags. For starters, Dahlia likes money and travel. She absolutely loved that fast-paced lifestyle. It's what she wanted. And once she got a taste of that, she wanted more. Trouble is, Mike owes every penny he has to the people he ripped off. He'd served his prison time. The only condition he had left was to pay off the $191,000 in restitution to the victims. And Mike, well, he can't go anywhere. My probation keeps me in Palm Beach County. Dahlia pressed me a little about the probation. Look, you have to get off, because she wanted to travel. The idea of so much cash being returned to its rightful owners is more than Dahlia can stand. She figures out a way to put it in her pocket. But to pull it off, she's going to have to scam her own husband. Dahlia did tell Mike that she'll do anything to get that restitution monkey off his back. She says she'll kick in nearly 100000 of her own money to make that happen. Mike's problem is he believes her. I was blinded by love, and uh, I just never saw any of that coming. It seemed like me and Dahlia were on the same page with everything, uh, and we were moving in the same direction. But the direction Dahlia's moving in is towards Mike's money. And now she gets a big chance. Mike's lawyer tells him not one cent of his restitution payments can come from any questionable source. Mike's accounts are still tainted. So Dahlia suggests the money come from her account, which Mike believes is full of squeaky clean real estate commissions. Dahlia said, you know, look, I'll put up half, and you put up the other half, and then we'll be done with this and we can do all these things we want to do. I had been on probation a long time. I was more exciting to get off probation than I was in anything else. I was going to get my life back. The plan is for Mike to give Dahlia 100 grand in cash. She puts it in her account and adds 91 grand of her own. Does Dahlia have that kind of money? I never really looked at Dahlia's money ever. You know, I wasn't concerned with that. Well, he should have been. Dahlia's never sold a thing except his condo and her body. So Michael starts to give her money. He writes her checks. He gives her some cash. Over a period of about two or three weeks, he gives her the $100,000, thinking, this is my wife. She loves me. She wants to help me. We're in this together. I gave Dahlia my half, you know, and her half just never seemed to show up, you know? And, and once that happened, uh, I guess you could say the games began. She takes his money, and she just spends it how she wants. We'd go shopping sometimes, and, and once in a while, you know, she'd say, hey, let me pay for that. You know, the funny thing is, I was paying for it. It was my money, you know, but I would never know that, right? Dahlia's scheme bears an uncanny resemblance to a well-known street scam. But she's got a big problem. She's married to the victim. What's worse, she doesn't even like him. What's the cure for the seven week itch? What if Michael was back behind bars? My impression was that she thought he'd be a perfect source of wealth, Michael DiBolito, as long as he wasn't there. And she could just enjoy the house and the cars and everything with him being in jail. The cops get a series of anonymous tips saying Mike is a big-time coke dealer. Check his car. You'll see. They're looking, looking. They find a cigarette pack with cocaine in it. I said, why would I put that under my tire? You know, if that was mine, I, I would assume it'd be in my pocket. Cop pulled me aside, and they're talking. He says, look, I'm going to let you go. And I'm like, I had no idea why this guy let me go. All he had to do was arrest me, and I was in a lot of trouble. Even if he arrested me and let me go, I was in trouble. Here's the bit that gets me. Lawmen love finding parolees breaking the law. Boom, back to prison. No trial, no hassle. But even the cops think. 
Coach Schmo, this is a setup. They tell Mike to watch his back and let him go. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to make some elementary deductions here. Let's start with uh, who's got the keys to my car. I was at the courthouse, and I ran into the arresting officer, and they said to me, hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know the reason we let you go that day, because we knew it was your wife. And I looked at him, I said, how'd you know it was my wife? He says she was more irritated that she had to stand there and wait than she was upset for you. Then there were several calls to his probation officer, several anonymous calls made um, that he's dealing drugs out of his house, that he's selling steroids, that he's selling ecstasy. And the probation officer would show up unannounced and do searches of Mike DiBolito's house. During that period of time, what she's doing is she's trying to have him arrested. She's trying to set him up. She's trying to get his probation officer to violate his probation so he'll go back to prison. How do we know all these details? Dahlia is a text addict. Check out this little gem. She definitely was enlisting her former boyfriends to try and help her get rid of Michael. Dahlia's many boyfriends seem only too glad to help. And why not? I mean, she's hot, and she makes it clear she's bored with Mike and very much available. She maintains contact with a lot of her ex-lovers and uses them for whatever she needs. Her bestest texter, with benefits, is a rich guy in California named Stanley. She uses him, actually, to assist her in trying to get Mike DiPolito arrested, trying to have him put in jail, planning drugs on him, conspiring to take the house from him. And ultimately, she tells Mike Stanley that she wants to be with him, capitalizing on the fact that he's a wealthy man. Stanley is not only rich, he's a buddyless Lothario who could make any girl squirm with textual desire. Dahlia, I have always wanted you. You are my unicorn. What the hell does that even mean? Stanley is happy to be Dahlia's love slave, but he's on the wrong coast. He can work the phones, though. So Mike gets a phone call, supposedly from a lawyer friend of Dahlia's, who convinces Mike to sign his paid-for condo over to her. His hook, you need to protect yourself, Mike. Dahlia could be your shelter. During one phone call, do you have any assets? Do you have anything that's in your name? Because I'm, I'm concerned that if you do, that since you owe this restitution, they can take, take your assets. And he says, well, I, I do actually happen to own a house. He says, well, you need to get the house out of your name and put it in your wife's name. He and Dahlia go the next morning, and he signs the house over. She gets the deed to the house. The title's totally in her name. She gets Mike Stanley to call the Department of the Treasury, to call the IRS, to call the Department of Corrections, trying to get Mike DiBolito in trouble with the authorities and arrested and back in jail so that he and Dahlia can be together. While all this is going on, it seems from Dahlia's text that she's still in the escort business. Love is blind, clueless. Call it what you want. Mike doesn't even notice. Michael DiPolito said that his friends and family suspected his wife of causing some of this trouble for him, but he didn't listen to them. Dahlia, from what I found out, was texting numerous old boyfriends. So she must have literally been walking out of the room and turning the corner and texting away. I never saw it. You could fall Dahlia for a thing or two, like being greedy, manipulative, and evil, but you can't call her vague. Despite making her wishes clear, Dahlia's efforts to get her husband back behind bars are going nowhere. And that puts her in a sticky situation. She's burnt through Mike's restitution money. Now, in my experience, people tend to get bent out of shape when large sums of money go missing. I promised this money to probation. Well, they wanted it. And now I don't have an excuse for where it went. I had confronted her a couple times. She would get very upset. It's not me. What are you talking about? You know I'm coming up with the money. I don't get that money. You know, I'm trying to give my wife credit. Oh, Dahlia has her ways to calm Michael down. And she gives him no time to think. Before Mike, the guy she leached off didn't mind. But Mike needs that hundred grand now to get his ass off probation. 
after two and a half weeks of this, you know, uh, it, it just got to the point where I, I knew, you know, she was lying. And, uh, you know, our sex life's still good. We're still getting along. We're still doing the things we do. But, you know, there's this shadow over me of, you know, OK, where's this money? Because now everybody's asking me, Mike, where's this money supposed to be here? So Dahlia's cornered. Mike's going to figure it out soon, and it will be ugly, unless something takes him out of the picture. It's hard to believe, but it seems that Dahlia's heart is made of ice. Murder for her is an easy way out of an awkward situation. Oh, and speaking of ice. She brought him tea that was laced with antifreeze. Yeah, awesome. I'll see you later. OK. All right. Bye. Have fun. I grab the tea and I take a sip. I couldn't get it out of my mouth fast enough to spit it out. It tasted like gasoline. In my mind, I'm just thinking, oh, they didn't stir my tea. I didn't think anything of it. So Michael DiPolito misses every possible tip off. He is alive today through no fault of his own. After the poison tea goes down the drain, Dahlia realized she needs professional help. Therapy? Ah, uh, now, this is a show about hitmen, remember? I mean, what do you think she's going to do? It's five minutes from Dahlia DiPolito's gym to the condo where she believes her husband's been murdered. She thinks she's driving down Easy Street. At 26, she's a rich widow. All she needs to do now is fake bereavement as well as she fake being a happy newlywed. There are better solutions to Dahlia's dilemma than murder, but none of them seem to cross her mind. If you're in the sex trade, I guess immediate release is what you're usually after. But hiring a hitman is the long-term solution. And she's got an immediate problem. What do you do? She produces a check for $191,000 so that Mike DiPolito can be off probation. There's no money to back it up. But Mike doesn't know that. This gets a little complicated, so pay attention. They bring the $191,000 check to Mike's lawyer. But now Dahlia demands that he pony up the extra 91 grand, not her. Mike's in a bind. He gets the cash and gives it to Dahlia. She hands over the check. Is there time for one last flim flam? Why, yes, there is. The old switcheroo. Mike DiPolito walks into his lawyer's office and hands him the check, thinking he's now off probation. He didn't look at it, thinks it's the same check. The lawyer opens the envelope. He finds a check for $191, not $191,000. Now Mike's really confused. He's no stranger to con games, but could his own wife be pulling a fast one? So now Dahlia's really in a bind. What could she come up with? How about, I'm not thinking clearly, Mike, because I'm pregnant with your baby. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, she didn't. Oh, yes, she did. Now I think I have a, a, a child coming with her. And so, you know, it's not only my new wife, it's my new pregnant wife. Uh, we're sitting there every night. She's reading baby books. I mean, this girl's nuts. We almost painted my extra bedroom with a baby mural. Thank God I didn't do that. At the time, Mike thinks life's great with Dahlia, but something odd is going on. Could somebody be out to get him? He's nervous and sets up security cameras. Other than the, the issue where, you know, the missing money and the probation, he said he thought he had the perfect marriage. They got along great. They went everywhere together. He said they had a tremendous sex life. I mean, he was very happy other than that one particular issue. The girl's sleeping in bed next to me every night. Her mother's over the house every other night. I'm at her mom's house every other day. You know, I'm doing a lot of nice things with her family. I just, you know, I couldn't imagine. I, I guess, let's just say this, if I was gonna do what she did, I wouldn't bring her around my family or people if I was just planned on robbing and trying to kill someone. I don't see it. So that fogged my, my judgment a little as well. Now, Dahlia married Mike in February 2009. By April, she's working on getting Mike whacked. I think Black Widow spiders have longer honeymoons. Dahlia realizes that killing Mike will be a lot easier if she outsources the job. So she decides the perfect candidate is her longtime lover, 
Muhammad Shahad. Muhammad gives us some pushback. Unlike Dahlia, he knows the difference between a favor and homicide. They're having a heated conversation, and she's saying about how she wants to have her husband killed. And there's some gang members from Riviera Beach that are close and can hear their conversation. So they step in and say, we'll do it. She takes them and drives them by the house that she lives in with Mike DiBolito. They come back and they tell Mohammed, you know, she's crazy, we're not going to do it. There's surveillance cameras outside of the front of the house. When the gangbang is back out, Dahlia turns up the heat on Mohammed. If he won't help her, she'll find someone else or do it herself with his gun. For Mohammed, the bloom is definitely off the Dahlia Rose. A list of nookie he was up for. First degree murder, not so much. Florida fries people for that. So what does he do? He calls the cops. Muhammad tells Detective Alex Marino of the Boynton Beach PD about Dahlia's crazy scheme. Detective Marino tells Muhammad he'll need his help to shut her down. Muhammad agrees to play along. I I'm glad the guy obviously did what he did and turned Dahlia into the police. He saved my life. In all fairness, you know, he spent a lot of my money with her. And he's banging my wife, so I'd have to say we're kind of even. Detective Moreno knows he's got to catch Dahlia red-handed or he can't charge her. Muhammad's story, just hearsay. So he bugs Muhammad's car and then gets him to set up a rendezvous. Dahlia DePolito showed up at the gas station driving her car. The informant was at the gas station already waiting for her. She exits her vehicle, goes into the informant's car that was set up with the video and audio, and they immediately began the conversation, and without any hesitation, she begins talking about how she wanted her husband killed. Muhammad is an actor, and he sticks to the script. I won't do it myself, Dahlia, but I do know a guy. Dahlia hands over pictures of Mike in their condo. The police get it all on tape. One take. Right, but right now I'm not seeing him. I'm not anything. Wipe my hands off the pictures. Really? You're going to give him some of oh, yeah. my fingerprints all over? I'm going to show it to him. He's not going to keep it. The next scene the cops want is the money shot. Dahlia hiring a hitman. Officer Witty John looks like a cop, but Dahlia doesn't pick up on it. Now, here's a little tip for you. Policemen and bad guys look alike, but cops have better teeth. They told me they had this uh, lady who was trying to find someone to kill her husband. So they wanted me to pose as the hitman and try to uh, make contact with her and set up a meeting so we can talk about, you know, the details of killing her husband. Officer Woody Jean, he was in the undercover unit. So we decided that he would be the best guy to play the role as a hitman. Woody Jean had been working undercover for a while, so he was actually very experienced. Dahlia DiPolito meets Officer Witty Jean in his guise of killer for hire. We had our undercover units set up the cameras inside the car, which would have been Woody Jean's car, and we set up audio where we can actually listen as it's happening live. Which is why we could hear exactly what Dahlia said when she thought she was hiring a hitman. I told her, well, okay, so how do you want it done? Where do you want it done? She was definitely uh, interested in telling me, this is his schedule, you know, on Wednesday. That's when I want it done, if it's possible. I said, well, Wednesday is good. We could. Wednesday's two days away. What you're seeing is a desperate woman who fears her scheming ways are about to be revealed. At the house, like, how do we, 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 how do her interaction with the hitman was very much a business transaction. Here's what I want to happen. Here's his schedule. Here's pictures. Here's the money. Let's get this done. She never expressed very much emotion about having her husband killed. It was like she was going to make a nail appointment. She was going to have her husband murdered, someone she supposedly loved, someone she's married to, and she could have cared less. But even when hiring a hitman, Dahlia's a savvy shopper. In fact, she's got an ingenious scheme to get Mike whacked 
for free. Dahlia hatches a plan for Mike to pay for his own hit. He's going to get 10 grand from the bank in a couple of days, she tells Witty. Hit him on the street, take the money, we're even. Bad plan, says Witty. Too many witnesses. Too hard to fake is what he's really thinking. What Witty really needs is for Dahlia to offer him money. That's the crime. Okay, when it's all done, I was going to get 3000 from you today. Right. Then Witty Jean convinces Dahlia that the way to do the hit is at the condo, the old robbery gone bad ploy. Because I was looking in the news, newspapers here, there's been a lot of burglaries in this area. You also want to uh, establish different aspects of a crime. You know, you definitely want to show intent. You actually want to gather evidence. Criminal intent? This is what it sounds like. I still just say to myself, you know, why didn't she just hire a lawyer and divorce me? I mean, oh, what would I do? Cry? Say no? You know, she would have still wound up, you know, making out like a bandit. Now you think that hitman is her ticket to life as a prosperous Boynton Beach widow. All of her needs will be taken care of. Officer Witty John also has plans to get Dahlia what she needs. But he thinks shackles will be a good start. You try to be as relaxed and cool as possible without losing your edge. Basically, you don't want to be uh, in there relaxed, so cool, to the point where you become complacent, and you know, you're going to die. Dahlia's bought Witty John's act. She offers him $3,000. That's pretty cheap for a hitman. But all Officer John needs on tape is for her to make any offer of money for murder. Her intent was that I'm going to pay $1,200 to get him killed. Uh, if he asked for $3,000, OK, I'm willing to pay $3,000. Meanwhile, lead investigator Alex Marino is blocking out the sting for the day of the hit. He wants Dahlia on camera after she thinks Mike's been killed. A trial like a movie is a show. He's preparing for it and wants every scene just right. What do you need to dress your set? Cop cars, crime tape, you know, all that CSI stuff. We're going to make a belief like it was uh, a robbery or a burglary that went wrong. Put some fingerprint dust in front of the house by the front door. Just make it look like somebody just got killed inside the house. The hit is set for Wednesday morning. Dahlia's job is to make herself scarce. I give her the instructions to leave her house by 6 o'clock in the morning. So this is Dahlia's moment of truth. She could call it off, stay home, tell the hitman, never mind. She might have to do some fast talking, but she's good at that. She doesn't do it. She kisses Mike goodbye like it's any other day. She heads to the gym, figuring once she sees him next, it'll be at the morgue. Dahlia gets up, says, I'm going to go to the gym today. And I'm like, OK. She just won't stop talking. When she leaves the house early in the morning, she takes all her jewelry to the gym. Uh, I mean, who does that? She took, you know, some of her prized possession with her because she knew that I was going to be stealing things from the house. She didn't want one of the things stolen to be hers. Wednesday morning, everybody shows up early in the morning, and people get assigned to different locations where they're going to be conducting surveillance. We set detectives at the house, giving us information when she leaves and when she goes to the gym. With Dahlia gone, the cops go to work. They've got to get it done fast. First thing, break the news to the newlywed that the woman of his dreams wants him six feet under. Sergeant Sheridan, Paul Sheridan, knocked on the door. And I was also standing there. And we make contact with Mr. Michael DiPolito for the first time. And we tell him that, hey, we're conducting an investigation where your wife is trying to get you killed. And that's why we're here. And we need to get you out of the house as soon as possible. You were shaking, nervous, in shock. You didn't know what to think. You know, it hit me. I'm like, OK, everything that happened, you know, the drugs, everything crazy that's been happening, the money missing, you know, I just knew it was her. I kind of knew it was her, but I didn't want to. My worst day in the world was that it was my wife. And lo and behold, here's the worst day in the world right now.
When Mike's safely downtown, Sergeant Ramsey calls the wannabe widow. This is Sergeant Frank Ramsey, Boynton Beach Police Department. We're at your residence, ma'am. It's very urgent when you come home. It involves your husband. There's been an incident. Upon her arrival, she sees all this police action going on and the yellow tape and everything else. So she pretty much has an idea thinking that her husband had been killed. What you're about to see is the first and only take of Dahlia's career-making performance. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? OK, I'm sorry to tell you, man. He's been killed. He's, he's been killed, man. Listen, try to calm down. You got to give Dahlia credit. She's a master at faking emotion. She's put a lot of thought into the script for today, and she plays her part beautifully. But things are about to go off script. Dahlia's going to have to try some improv, and the show just keeps getting better. Dahlia DiPolito has just been told that her husband, Michael, has been murdered. Everybody in this scene is acting. She's not sad nor surprised. And the cops, oh, they faked the whole scene. What Dahlia doesn't know is that her husband, Michael, is alive and cooling his heels down at the Boynton Beach PD. The police told me, we're going to sit in this room. You're going to be able to watch us confront her. So we sat down there, and we waited for him to bring Dahlia in. Now, I know a thing or two about acting, and so do cops, especially when it comes to things like, I'm shocked by this terrible thing that I had nothing to do with. I've informed people in reference to their loved ones dying, and I've always got a different reaction than what Dalia DePolito did. She immediately, before he can even finish the sentence, she starts crying. Oh, and that isn't her only miscue. Right after she gets told about it, she asked about the dogs, which just didn't make any sense. I mean, through my uh, experience, I've never had that. Um, she wanted to see the body. She wanted to make sure that he was dead. And then she jumps into, how are the dogs? We need to get your husband's killer, ma'am. For those of you worrying, the dog is fine. What's not fine is Dahlia's script. She doesn't know it, but it's off the rails. It's actually a cop show now. And they need one more scene. Dahlia lies through her teeth. They could have set up a better camera angle, but it did get the shot. We did the initial interview with her and made her believe she was actually helping us in the investigation. Listen, is there anybody that you know that you think would want to kill your husband? This is about probation. Dahlia points the finger at some of the people from Mike's shady past. When Sergeant Paul Sheridan's heard enough, he pulls the plug. The game's over with, OK? There's no more games with you and I. Now we're going to get down to serious business. I want to know if you know this guy. Come here. Bring this guy in here. Now is when Dahlia's mouth gets a little dry, which is always bad news in her line of work. One of the detectives put handcuffs on me. I put a handcuff me behind my back. The guy's was, we've caught the guy who did it. He's a prisoner. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before, ever. And then she looked up at me. She said, nope, I've never seen him before. And no emotion. She just looked at me. She's like, nope, I don't know him. So another lie, you know, which we had her on video meeting the actual undercover agent days before. Hey, man. With that scene, the cops have their movie in the can. All that's left is what we call the denouement, the wrap-up. It's up to Sergeant Sheridan to give Dahlia the bad news. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did, recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail for solicitation of first-degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I couldn't believe it was happening, but yet I, I completely believed it was happening. Tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. 
I want you to quit your acting and get this over with. You know what? Still refusing to admit the truth. Our dangerous Dahlia is about to find out this is a completely different production than the three grand drama she thought she paid for. You sound like a fool right now denying this. Because, like my partner just said, everything's on tape. She was just like telling us, you guys have been so nice to me, you know. I don't understand, you know, I would never do something like that. I don't want to give you guys a hard time, like, I, you know, I, don't, you know, you guys have been really nice to me, and I know you didn't have to take special considerations and things like that. I appreciate it. She was very good at manipulating men. Even doing the, our interview, when I talked to her, she even tried to, you know, manipulate us. What I decided was to let her listen to a portion of the actual meeting of her and the uh, undercover agent to let her know this is really serious. I'm sitting there saying to myself, I'm like, wow, like, like I didn't even get kill him softly, make him go away painlessly. Like I got like, you know, you know, make sure you kill. It was like kill him, yeah, with a gun. And she's like, yeah, okay. I thought I was always very nice to her, you know. I, that's what really surprised me. I also showed her some photos of when she met the undercover agent, and we have all this evidence. Be honest and tell the truth. Dahlia doesn't fess up. We go ahead and arrest her for Close to your first degree murder. Can we stand up? Stand up, please. Right. right after that, then we decided to tell her the truth, how her husband wasn't dead. And at one point, we actually bring her husband in front of the interview room and let him let her see that he was alive. Oh, my God. He's alive. Come here, please. Come here. When I saw Dahlia do the fake crying and the tears and oh my God, um, you know, I, I, I had been watching her lie to me for three, four months. If I caught her with her hand in the cookie jar, she would swear to me my hand was not in the cookie jar and not give up. Dahlia called me from jail. Everybody wants to know why I took the call. I had to take the call. I just wanted to hear what she was going to say. I can't help you. Don't you understand what just happened? What they're saying is not true. How is that possible? Like I'm sitting here. It's not true. It's not possible. You wouldn't even give me two minutes to talk to you, but it's not possible. What they're okay. saying is not true. How can you believe that? I heard your voice. How can you believe it? So she's, you know, I didn't do this. How come you're not hiring me a lawyer? And I'm just, I, I just couldn't believe that she kept coming and coming. I'm like, look, I said, you're caught. I didn't even get involved and you tried to kill me. I'm more like, you stole my money, you stole my house. I'm like, she's like, help me, help me. And I said, I'll help you. I said, sign my house back over to me and I'll help you. You know what I'll do? You know what I'll do for you? Seriously? Bye. You signed my house back over to me. I'll help you, Mom. Give me my house back. That's it. That's it what? I'll help you. So I don't have to go through the legal bullshit I have to go through already. What does that mean? It means sign my property back to me that you stole, basically. That's what you're thinking, and I didn't steal anything. All right, so listen. I'll have the papers sent over to you somehow. You'll sign them over to me, and then I will help your mother. Okay? I'm not signing anything. And I knew what she'd say. Of course, she says, oh, I'm not doing that. And I just chuckled. I said, I knew you were going to say that. This is someone who basically thinks that nothing's going to ever happen to her. She's not really going to be arrested. She's not going to be convicted of this. Um, she'll get out of this, like she, she always does. I didn't do anything, and I didn't plot anything. <laughs> One interesting um, piece of evidence that we found during the course of the investigation, we did a forensic exam of her computer. And the day that she was to meet with Woody Jean, the hitman, while she's waiting for him, she's at home and she's on her computer. And she does a search, a Google search. And she types in funeral homes in Boynton Beach, which is where she lived. 
She clicked into um, websites such as how to have a meaningful memorial service. So clearly the theory from the prosecution was that, you know, she's sitting there right before she's going to meet with the hitman. She's plotting her husband's funeral service, and she's trying to figure out how she's going to look like the grieving widow. So you remember how in that old Bible story, Delilah robbed Samson of his power by setting him up for a haircut? Maybe it's the handcuffs that sap Dahlia's power. When Michael DiPolito faces the woman who tried to end his life, it's hard to see what the attraction was. When I saw Dahlia in court, I felt bad for her. From what I was told, Dahlia thought this was all going to go away and she was going to move on with her life. And I don't think she understood, you know, what really is happening. You've seen a greedy, manipulative, evil woman who won't stop at anything. There's no denying the truth. She did it, and you know it. Before he sentences Dahlia, the judge tells her what he thinks of what she did. It was pure evil. You were taking advantage of a guy that was gullible, that was in love with you. Dahlia DiPolito gets 20 years. On this day, Michael gets the last word. I wish we were never here. And as far as the sentence, I'm 5,000% happy with it. That's all for now. If I were talking to Dahlia now, I, I guess I'd say, well, you know, was it worth it? You know, this is a person I, I would, I would lay in bed and tell her all the things I did wrong to go to prison and be on probation and how I definitely would never do it again. And, you know, obviously she didn't hear a word I said. Michael didn't see the entire big picture. He didn't see really what was going on because he was so blinded by love. He had it so bad that love was blind, deaf, and dumb. You know, the funny part of all this, if you really look at it, she's actually very, she had me five ways to Sunday 10 different times, but she just didn't do it. You know, she couldn't poison me right. She couldn't plant drugs on me right. She couldn't, you know, she had me five different ways and just kept fumbling the ball. So what's the lesson here? Well, here's one thing to ponder. Mike DiPolito had a wife who loved him. He dumped her for a greedy, conniving, homicidal floozy. No matter how small your brain is, it's still bigger than, you know, other body parts. Not using the brain God gave you can be a fatal mistake.